Infill-in parameters are usually the settings you tweak in order to adjust the strength of your 3D prints. Unfortunately, these properties are not aware of the way your parts are later loaded when they are used. So in today's video, I'll show you how you can use finite element simulation to create smart infill and only place material at the location where it is really needed. In order to prove that this method works, I have printed test hooks with different reinforcement techniques that will load with my tensile testing machine until they fail. Guten Tag everybody, I'm Stefan and welcome to CNC Kitchen. A couple of months ago, Adrian Boyer, the father of RepRep, posted an article in which he talked about virtual fibers in FDM 3D prints. With this technique, you're basically adding small holes at the location where your parts are highly stressed. The slicer adds perimeters at these locations and therefore adds strength. He talked about how you could use simulation to automatically determine the locations for these virtual fibers, but there isn't any implementation for that yet. Since I'm quite familiar with simulations, I thought about a way how I could implement that. You can plot and export the principal stress vectors for your simulation model, but my time unfortunately is too limited at the moment to try and convert these results into virtual fibers. If you guys are interested in the topic, check out episode 5 of the Melt Zone podcast that I host together with Tom and where we talk about this topic in more detail. Since virtual fibers weren't that easy to implement, I thought about how I could use finite element simulation to make my prints stronger and stiffer. And then I had a brainwave. So Slick3R allows you to import a so-called modifier mesh that lets you modify the print settings at specific locations in your part. A simulation technique called topology optimization will output a rough STL model at the locations where you should place material in order to make it as strong as possible. Combine these two and you have smart infill. So the outside of your model will stay totally the same, only the inside of your part will have more infill at the locations where the simulation determined that it's most efficient. Yes, you could also directly print the topology optimization, but the results are usually very rough and not suitable for direct printing, so you need to remodel them, as I have already shown in a previous video. This procedure is much easier. It's still not a one-click solution, but I'll quickly show you the workflow and we'll print test hooks with different parameters to see how their failure load and stiffness compares. I used Autodesk Fusion 360 for this because it's a great CAD software with a basic shape optimization tool and available for free for students and makers and small companies. Alright, so we start with a model where we want to do the smart infill. In order to create the smart infill, we need to do a shape optimization. So we hit model, simulation and select shape optimization right here. We create a new study just by clicking here and we are in the shape optimization environment. The thing we need to do is for the shape optimization, we need to set up constraints and loads and we need to set some parameters in order to run the simulation and mesh our part. So the first thing I will do is create the constraints. So uh, the first thing will be a structural constraint. So just where the part will be held later when it's in use. So I create a fixed support at this surface up here. Just hit OK. And we will load it on the other side. So I will select structural load, select the small surface down here. And um, put in the magnitude of the load. The load itself or the magnitude of the load itself doesn't really matter for this shape optimization. So you can set it to any value um, and the results will not change. So usually it is set um, normal to the surface, which is totally fine in my case. Otherwise you can go to vectors and um, input the direction of your load in X, Y or Z coordinates. I hit OK. And the setup is pretty much finished. So the next thing we need to do is mesh our part. In order to mesh our part, we can preview the standard mesh. Uh, if we just right click on mesh right here and say generate mesh. So as you can see right here, the mesh is pretty coarse. 
this would give us a result, but also the result itself would be pretty coarse. So in order to make the mesh finer, we go on manage, settings, mesh, and just slide this slider, mm, let's see, all the way down to the left and take a look at the results. Again, uh, generate the mesh. And this looks fine, but for what we need, it's probably a bit too fine. So I'll just go back in here, settings, and increase the element size just a little bit. Remesh, and we should be all set. All right, so uh, the last thing we actually just need to do is uh, define the shape optimization target. The shape optimization target will um, tell the optimizer how many percent of the material we see we see right here should be remaining. So if you want to make your pot really strong, increase the 30% right here to a higher value. If you just want to slightly increase the strength of your part, you can even use a smaller value. But 30% is usually fine for a start. We hit OK. We run a pre-check. Uh, the pre-check will tell us if all constraints and all necessary information is there. And we hit solve. Um, the solving needs to be done on the cloud. So I select cloud simulation model and I solve the study. This will send all of the files to the Autodesk servers, solve the model there and then send the results back to me that we can take a look at it. Okay. All right, so this took now around three minutes to solve and we can already see the results, which look pretty nice. Um, before we export this surface right here or the, the result of the simulation, you can like fine tune how much material uh, you wanna have in the end by using the slider right here on the side. If you are fine with the amount of material, just um, hit the promote button and the result will be converted to a mesh. Just hit OK. Takes a couple of seconds and we are almost ready to go. Go into model components, bodies, mesh body one, right click on it and save the result as an OBG. And we're all set. Another method I thought about is exporting the regions of your part that see the most amount of stress. Unfortunately, I didn't find a way to do that in Fusion 360, so I had to use ANSYS, where also a free but very limited student edition is available. In ANSYS Workbench, we create a new static simulation by just dragging the analysis system on our project page. Right click on geometry, import the ge geometry you want to analyze, in my case a step file. Double click on model in order to get into the me ANSYS mechanical environment. In here, it's basically the same as in uh, Fusion 360. We need to create our constraints, we need to uh, set the mesh and then we are more or less all set. So let's start with the constraints. Um, select static structural. Uh, we want a new support, in this case a fixed support on this surface right here. Apply. And we want to add a load, in our case a force, on this surface down here. Hit OK. Uh, set the magnitude. In our case it also doesn't really matter how high the magnitude is. Uh, we only need a force in the right direction. Hit OK. The direction is still wrong. We want to have it in the other direction. Just like this and hit OK. Um, the standard mesh in ANSYS Workbench is pretty coarse, so this won't really be suitable for our application. I just go into sizing and increase the resolution a little and take a look how the results are. Unfortunately, we are kind of limited by the number of elements we can use, but we're still fine at the moment, so we can increase it again a little bit more. And this looks pretty good for the moment. So we select static structural, select solve. Now the finite element model will be generated, solved in the background, and then we will get our results back. We can go on simulation, deformation, total. Uh, just to see if our load case uh, well looks properly. This looks fine. Um, but now we want to export the locations where the highest stresses are. 
So go on stress, equivalent stress, right click on here, evaluate all of the results. And we can see with these uh, with this colored plot, the locations where our stresses are the highest. And this mm, really well matches up pretty well with the location where this hook usually fails during the tests. Okay, um, now it is really, really important to um, adjust the results scale to undeformed because otherwise the model that we will export is also deformed. So select this right here. Um, in order to only export the regions with the highest stresses, we will need to create a chapped ISO surface plot. So I select this right here. Um, if I drag the slider now, the highest stresses location will be removed. This is not what we want. So we say bottom capped ISO surface. And now we can just drag the slider a little until the amount of material we still see on the screen is for us the amount of material where we really want to uh, um, strengthen our part in the end. How much you really need? Well, depends on um, the result you want to have. The more material you will have, the more material will be used during the printing process, but also the stronger your part should be in the end. This looks kind of nice in my opinion. Now I just hit equivalent stress, right but mouse button right here, export and export it as an STL file. And we are all set. In order to see if the method really works, I applied it to my test hook that I usually use for my filament tests and other studies. The starting point will be the hook with two perimeters and 10% infill. Usually you'd increase the strength of such a part if you increase the number of perimeters or the infill ratio. So one of the hook has five instead of two perimeters. The other one still has two perimeters, but 42% infill, which results in the same weight as the one with five perimeters. The hooks with the smart infill also all have the same weight as the last ones, so we can compare them properly. Adding the modifier mesh in Slick 3R Prusa edition is pretty simple and this slicer does not only support Prusa's printer, you can also add any other one you like. The G-code for the multicolor prints that I made for example on the Hicktube Duale 3 was also created in here. Alright, um, in order to add the modifier mesh I need to double click on the part and in here I select the load modifier button. I have now selected the part that came out from the topology optimization in Fusion 360 and we have it in here. Make sure that both parts are at the same location. If this is not the case, you did something wrong and the coordinate systems of the parts do not match up. I select the um, topology optimization result and I add a new modifier. For um, our smart infill, I want to set the infill density and the infill pattern. Um, in my case, I always used 100% infill using rectilinear infill. Hit OK, hit slice now, and let's take a look on the inside of our part. And this is really nice. So we can see that at the locations where our modifier mesh was, the infill ratio is 100%. Everything else is, well, has the normal 10% infill ratio. Cool, perfect. We have the smart infill hooks with a modifier mesh from the shape optimization and the maximum stress locations. On these, I used 100% rectilinear infill because that's usually giving you a really dense infill, but the plastic strands are not aligned with the load. I also tried using concentric infill, which should make that a little bit better, but that resulted in quite some gaps. At last, I tried the modifier mesh from a specifically optimized hook, where I hollowed the part out and only optimized the internal volume. The outer shell was always kept 100% dense, as it will also be in reality. This should give us better results, but makes creating the model a bit trickier, might sometimes not work at all and can result in a bad finite element mesh, why this wasn't my method of choice. All parts were printed on my original Prusa Mark 2.5 in Prusa's new silver PLA. 
In order to test the hooks for their strength, I put them into my DIY tensile testing machine and slowly ripped them apart until they failed, some of them quite explosively. As expected, the two perimeter hook was the weakest and failed at 49 kilograms of load, followed by the one that was reinforced with 42% infill that broke at 60 kilograms. The hook that was properly strengthened with 5 perimeters broke at 73 kilograms, which is already 20% stronger than the one with the increased infill ratio at the same weight. Now we get to the hooks with the smart infill. Keep in mind that they all weigh the same as the previous two, so that we can compare the results. The hook that I reinforced at the locations of the highest stress failed at 82 kilograms. The next one was the specimen with the concentric infill pattern that failed at 86 kilograms, already another 20% stronger than the hook with 5 perimeters. The hook that I thought would be the strongest, so where I did the optimization only in the core of the part, unfortunately already failed at 92 kilograms. And the strongest one where I did the optimization on the whole part was able to bear almost 100 kilograms, which is an impressive 33% stronger than our conventionally reinforced part. Comparing it to our two perimeter baseline, it's only 42% heavier, but even twice as strong. The stiffness behaved kind of similar where again the topology optimized parts were the best. Another interesting thing I was able to observe is that the infill of the parts gradually failed during the test procedure. This can be seen when the displacement force curves are interrupted. I'm not 100% sure if this is a good or a bad thing. On the one hand it shows that the part is kind of inhomogenic, on the other hand this could also be a failsafe mechanism, releasing high internal stresses before the whole part fails. What do you guys think? Alright, this was a short overview on my smart infill procedure that can be used to improve the strength and the stiffness of 3D prints at the same weight as conventionally reinforced parts without the problem of having to smooth or interpret shape optimization results. Of course, this is not a one click solution yet, but in my opinion pretty easy to use. There are still plenty of possibilities to improve the idea by, for example, not only using 100% infill, but using multiple modifier meshes, increasing the density in a gradient. I'd like to hear your ideas, how we could further improve the method and what you think would be a suitable demonstration object. Quadcopter maybe? Leave your comments and ideas down below. Thanks for watching everyone. I really hope that you enjoyed the video and learned something. Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. If you want to support my studies, then head over to Patreon or take a look at the other methods in my description. Auf Wiedersehen and I hope to see you again next time.